Good right. to go? Go. In 2020, Cabrina has two kites that both make the... They both claim to jump huge, have loads of hang time, and rock up wind. In 2020, Cabrina has two kites that both claim to jump huge, have loads of hang time, and rock up wind. The Cabrina Switchblade and the new AV8. And you're probably thinking to yourself, great, another kite making all the same claims as pretty much other kite, and you're not wrong. We've had our hands on the AV8 for a few months now, and we've been testing. This new kite is being touted as a big air machine and a rocking race kite for you hydrofoil enthusiasts. So the real question here is where do these two kites stack up? Which one is right for you? And maybe most important, which one jumps better? Hey guys, don't forget to click that eye icon in the upper right hand corner of your screen for the full written review and some bonus content. We've been working on creating the most in-depth reviews online and in order to keep the video a little shorter, I'll be going into more detail on the written review. So Cabrina is hyping this kite up to be pretty much good at everything, and I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't a big fan of Cabrina's lineup, but between these two kites, there are some significant differences. Let's start with the wind range. In previous videos, I've often touted the Cabrina Switchblade as having one of the largest wind ranges on the market, and while I do stand by that to a fault, in this case, the A8 is the clear winner. But just to give you some perspective, just the other day, I took the 7 meter switchblade out and uh, I would say that the other locals were on 14s and 15s and just prior I had uh, put a 14 up myself. Uh, now with the 7, I was able to get upwind and in this instance, jumping wasn't amazing. It, it was actually pretty awful, but my point is, even when I was on half the size switchblade that I should have been on, I was able to get upwind and hang out by the pier with all the guys on the 14 and 15 meter kites. So in contrast, the AV, it actually does have a larger wind range on the high end and the bottom end. And when chatting with Tucker here, he was utterly blown away at the, uh, the sheer range of this kite. And when it comes to this point, this is something that I don't really often see on too many kites. You know, usually a kite will uh, favor the low end or favor the high end. And with this kind of uh, being a throwback to some of those more classic bow kites, you just have a stupid amount of V-power and a stupid amount of grunt on this kite. So what this means for you is you're going to be able to take the same kite out in less wind and more wind, and you're going to have a very difficult time choosing the wrong size AV8. Now before you make up your mind, there are some trade-offs to consider. Let's move on to the other points. When it comes to bar pressure and feel, this is a very subjective point, and depending on who you ask, with the Switchblade, most people will tell you that it is a moderate bar pressure kite. I've even heard some people claim that it has heavy bar pressure. Uh, I, f I find it to be moderate myself. Uh, I can name on fewer than three fingers kites that have more bar pressure than that. So yeah, I, I just consider it moderate. Yeah. The AV has more, right? Yeah, for sure. So I think that's a good way to put it is to say that it's moderate. Yeah. Now, with the AV8, regardless of who you ask, this kite's going to have heavy bar pressure. And this just comes back to the fact that it is kind of more of that traditional bow kite design. So you can expect it to pull more like a truck. It's gonna have that heavier, really consistent feel. And one of the benefits of this traditional feel is when you're in gusty wind or the wind picks up, it just soaks everything up. You know, it has a ton of deep power. There's a lot of throw in the bar. So it's a very smooth, almost, almost disconnected feel. You're very connected, but you're disconnected from all the garbage in the wind, if you will. So what this comes down to is the Switchblade is going to be more of a modern hybrid type feeling kite. You know, it's not the lightest kite by any means, but it is a bit faster and kind of has a more, more hybrid feel, whereas the AV is really going to have that traditional feel. It's very much a throwback to like the old Switchblade or the old Crossbow. Obviously a modern version, far more refined than those old kites. But unlike those kites, it's surprisingly efficient and smooth, uh, as it is a modern kite. And what's interesting about the AV8 is it's very much a park and pole style kite, but it is insanely fast, even more so than the Switchblade. When I say fast, I don't mean it's a fast flying or maneuverable kite, I mean it's a fast kite. So if you are hauling on a hydrofoil or down a wave, this kite's going to keep up with you. Now, in contrast, the Switchblade, it is more maneuverable. So while it's not going to move as fast through the wind window, it is a more maneuverable kite in the wind window. So for perspective, like I said, the Switchblade is very much a modern day hybrid, and it's not nearly as fast as, say, the Moto in the Cabrina lineup. 
So, you know, between the Moto and the Switchblade, the Moto is that fast, light, playful kite. And then you move it back in the lineup and you have the Switchblade and the Aviate. And the Switchblade just sits between the two as, uh, you know, a somewhat middle of the road kind of fast, maneuverable kite. Not the fastest kite, not the slowest kite, but you kind of get the benefits of both. You get that grunty low end, you get that playfulness, and it just meets somewhere in the middle. And you get a lot of the benefits, a lot of those like bow kite benefits of, you know, excessive D-power, loads of low end, and you're gonna sacrifice some playfulness for the switchblade. Whereas the Moto, you're kind of giving up some of that low end, uh, but it's a very, very playful kite. And the Aviate obviously has the most low end of the three kites. It's also the least playful of the three kites. Now, if you're a more aggressive kite flyer, meaning you like to do kite loop base tricks like dark slides or back roll kite loops or down loop transitions or, or anything of that nature, you're gonna wanna be on the switchblade or even the moto if you wanna get really crazy with it. And uh, if that's your style, you know, the Aviate, you can still do those things, but that is a very grunty kite. Probably not the best option for kite loops. Very wide arc, very strong pull. It's possible, Probably not the most fun of the three. Now coming back to the AV, the main benefit here on the feel is it's that traditional old school feel. So if you're somebody that likes to do board offs, you want lots of hang time, you just want to launch and float through the air without really doing anything, uh, the AV8 has more of that traditional autopilot feel. And I've made this reference for the Switchblade actually, kind of being an autopilot like height. Take that a step further with the AVA. So it's, it's very autopilot, very minimal input from the rider. You pretty much just pull the bar and you're coming off the water. And it's, it's kind of like that actually on both of these kites. The Switchblade has that same very easy jumping, but you can also get a little more active with the Switchblade and uh, just work the kite a little bit more. Whereas the AVA, you're kind of locked in. The kite's gonna do all of the work for you. And on that point, let's talk about jumping. Now, I've talked with a few people about this actually, and we have a lot of different opinions. Different opinions in the shop, different opinions with the Cabrina riders, different opinions just with testing it. And uh, some people will say that the Switchblade actually jumps better because it's a more playful kite. So if you're a very experienced rider, you can kind of whip it and get a bit more height out of it. Um, whereas the AVA definitely has more loft, but it may not jump as high. Take this with a grain of salt, as uh, this is actually very debatable, and we very much welcome your feedback on this one. Um, now, when it comes to my opinion, uh, as I'm the one filming this video, I'm going to share my opinion, and I'm kind of of the camp that the Switchblade still can jump higher, so there is no doubt that you are going to get more loft, more airtime, and more downwind drift on the AV8. Uh, and the Switchblade as well, it's, it's quite a lofty kite, but it is not as lofty as the AV8. Being such a flat, high aspect kite, it just has that old school design where once you go up, it's going to be a while until you actually come back down. And just to elaborate further, a lot of this just comes down to what you want out of your kite. To be candid, probably 90% of us are not even going to be able to tell the difference when it comes to jumping on these two kites. So if you're after that king of the air style kite where you want to throw more mega loops, like very, very powered mega loops, the Switchblade is going to be a much better choice because it's more maneuverable and you can really whip it and you have a lot more control over the kite. Whereas the Aviate, like I said, it's that pull and go kind of kite. It's going to send you into the sky. So there are advantages to both. And uh, truth be told, I really don't think many people could uh, maximize the jump between the two of these regardless. But the main takeaway here is the AV8 will probably be easier to get more air with. The Switchblade, almost as easy. Definitely the second easiest kite to jump with in the lineup. When it comes to jumping, the AV8 is a little bit easier. It caters to that old school rider who just wants to put the kite in the air pretty much do nothing with the kite and then focus on their rotation or a board off and just uh, getting tons of loft. Uh, whereas the Switchblade, you know, it's that king of the air style, you're looping the kite, you're getting active with it. Still very, very lofty kite, just not as lofty as the ABA. However, this is an open forum and the whole idea behind the series is just to get the most amount of information from as many people as possible on all of these kites in one place. So don't hesitate to kind of leave your feedback on the AVA and your feedback on the Switchblade. 
The goal here is to get the right kite into your hands. So let's talk about relaunching. Now this is a point that I don't often cover unless there's kind of a, a merit to it. And in, in this instance, I think there is. The AVA it falls into that family of the Apollo or the Velocity. It's a kind of a flatter um, kite. So the Switchblade is going to have a little easier relaunch and this is simply because the AVA is so flat. But don't let that scare you because it's actually not difficult to relaunch the AVA. Uh, in previous years, um, you know, this, the AVA, it is replacing the Apollo. And if you've ever flown an Apollo, you know that it was notoriously bad at relaunching. So don't be mistaken, the AVA is nothing like the Apollo when it comes to relaunch. But it is flatter than the Switchblade, so it doesn't quite rock up as easy or fast. However, we've had no problem relaunching this. So uh, the takeaway here is if you are a new rider, it might take you a little longer to get the AVA up. If you're an experienced rider, you're not gonna have any problems at all. But between the two, for sure, the Switchblade has a more autopilot-like relaunch. It's not really uncommon to kind of crash and drop your Switchblade, and it's just sitting there bouncing on the water ready to go, and you pull on a line, and it's back up in the sky. Uh, and the, the Aviate maybe it just takes a bit more work, so it's not always kind of primed and ready to go. You know, sometimes you're gonna have to work it up a little bit. But you know, if you're that big air, old school kind of rider, chances are you're also uh, very good at relaunching kites. So what about the waves? Now obviously neither one of these are wave kites, but between the two, the Switchblade's an all-around kite, so it does perform better in the waves. That said, there is something kind of unique about the uh, Aviate. And I had mentioned that if you were like a hydrofoil eraser, uh, the Aviate's very fast, so it's going to keep up with the rider. And this actually helps out in the waves, so when you're dropping in, because of the speed of this kite, the AVA really will stick with you. It's not going to drift back into the window and fall behind you. So it's kind of nice. You can kind of just park the AVA and do your thing. But be mindful because it is heavy bar pressure, very strong pull. So it's probably not going to be the best choice in the waves by any means. And you can certainly do it. Uh, but between the two, if you love getting in the waves, you're probably going to want to go for the switchblade in this case. Now, when it comes to hydrofoiling, obviously the Aviate is part of Cabrina's Aviate program. This kite's made for hydrofoil racing, so it's definitely the clear winner between the two. And uh, the Switchblade, you know, don't be afraid. There's plenty of people who have learned to hydrofoil on the Switchblade. You can hydrofoil on any kite, so, uh, you know, when it comes to this point, don't let that scare you. Uh, it's just there are better options. You know, we, we love the drifter for hydrofoiling here. That's by far the, uh, the go-to kite because it drifts and all those things that make it good for the waves really make it a great option for hydrofoiling. That said, if you're somebody who's looking for a, uh, a low wind option, the Aviate has some pretty serious benefits. So it's, it's very fast. It's going to keep up with you. So, you know, uh, depending on the foil that you're using, if you happen to be in a very, very fast hydrofoil, the Aviate is going to keep up with you. And then, as well, the Aviate, it has a lot of D-Power. And the Switchblade is a kite that has a lot of D-Power, but the Aviate has more D-Power. So this is kind of advantageous when you're hydrofoiling because you can really dump the power of the kite. You're not getting ripped off that hydrofoil board. In chatting with the guys here, like Tucker, who are just hydrofoil crazy, they, they would choose the Aviate any day on hydrofoil over the Switchblade. So last up is kite loops, and I'm sure by now you've guessed it, the Switchblade is better for kite looping. And this is just because the Aviate has such a wide arc and it's such a heavy kite. I'm not gonna lie, kite loops would probably be very intimidating with the Aviate. Still doable, but uh, the Switchblade is just a more playful kite. And with the Aviate, you know, you can still do down loops and things of that nature, but if you're looking to do powered kite loops, that's going to be one very powered kite loop on the Aviate. It's just not the most playful kite in the lineup, so uh, I'll leave that decision up to you. You can do it, but the Switchblade's probably going to feel a lot better. So just to give you perspective, um, in Cabrera's lineup, as far as it comes to kite loops, if that's on your radar, the FX is going to be the most powerful, the most aggressive, probably the best kite looping kite in the range, and then coming in second would be the Moto, you know, a much more friendly, easier, lighter kite to do kite loops with. Right behind the Moto would come the Switchblade. You're starting to kind of get into some of those user-friendly traits like the low end and uh, lots of D-power. Um, doesn't quite loop as well as the Moto, but still very fun. And then last in the lineup would be that Aviate. And it's just uh, not the best kite looping kite in Cabrina's lineup. Oh, and let's not forget the Contra. Granted, 
I've actually never hesitated to uh, do, you know, kite loops near the edge of the wind window on the Contra. And it's, it's probably not, you know, a far cry with the AV8. You, you can still get away with it. So don't get me wrong, it's just not the best choice. And the last point that I wanted to cover in this uh, comparison was racing. Obviously there's no real comparison here. The AV8 is a race kite, the Switchblade is an all-around kite. So it kind of goes without saying that the AV8 is going to be a better choice. Very niche category. If you're a racer, you probably already know what kite you want to choose. Um, but the AV is kind of exciting because it's part of Cabrina's One Design program. And they're kind of reaching out to yacht clubs and getting younger sailors involved. And the, uh, the whole concept is to just have one design, one hydrofoil, one kite, and even the playing field. So rather than guys kind of showing up with a mixed quiver and whoever has the most expensive kite just smokes everybody else, you know, everybody's uh, set up on just this one design. So it's pretty sweet what they're doing there. If you're into hydrofoil racing, I recommend you check out the one design program. You know, get your hands on the AV8 kite and foil. It's, it's a pretty cool thing what they're doing right now within the industry and kind of trying to expand and grow things. And I'll be the first to admit that I'm not the most avid hydrofoiler here at Mac Kite. You know, I'm not really into racing or anything like that, but what Cabrina is doing with the One Design program is pretty sweet. So in summary, like I said, there are two kites in Cabrina's lineup that kind of take the claim of the uh, best upwind ability, you know, the best jumping and the most hang time. And uh, between the two, personally, I think the Switchblade jumps better. Um, but many of the guys here would challenge me on that and uh, I really can't give you a clear-cut answer on this one right now. Uh, but as far as loft and hang time, the AV8 is definitely a loftier kite. You're going to get more hang time with that kite. And what this comes down to is one, the Switchblade is an all-around kite, far more versatile. You know, you can use it in waves, you can do freestyle with it, you can do anything and everything with the Switchblade. The AV8 is more of that old school bow kite feel, so if you want heavy bar pressure, the maximum wind range, if you want to race, uh, if you just want to send it and just do really, really lofty tricks, you're going to love the AV8. Now as always guys, Versus, it is an open forum, and the main goal for the last few years here has been just to get the most amount of information and opinions on kites as possible in one place. So I really do welcome your feedback, if you've flown the AV8, if you've flown the Switchblade, please leave a comment and just help other people who are trying to decide between these two kites. So if you want to learn more, click the eye icon and visit our Kiteboarding Knowledge Center. The last few years we've been working very hard at putting out the most content online in one place and now we're finally getting to a point where it's more navigable. So a lot of our YouTube videos are now sorted in series and categories and you can really uh, dive in and just learn loads about kiteboarding in one place in a very organized way. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you've already subscribed, hit the bell icon uh, where you would have subscribed and then you'll receive an email notification every time we drop a new video. So hey guys, uh, this has been Rigo and I will catch you next time on Versus.